Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, so my name is Jennifer Webb. I'm an investment director at Swisscom Ventures. I joined this year to catalyze our sustainability investment theme and um, looking forward to investing our current 300 million fund. Um, Dominic. Hi, everybody. I'm Dominic, so in charge of Swisscom Ventures. Um, we started the journey about 15 years ago as a startup within a corporate. Um, and now we, we have 600 million under management. We invest about 100 million per year, typically 10 companies, so entry ticket, one to five millions, uh, up to 40, uh, 30 million per, per participation. Uh, half of that in Switzerland, the other half internationally. It's all digital, uh, some hardware. We exclude biotech, but pretty much all the rest. And we are hybrid structure. We invest 75% of the money comes from institutional investors, so 15 pension funds and, and banks and uh, family offices, and 25% comes from uh, corporates, Swisscom. So it's an interesting experiment as a hybrid fund in between uh, the traditional independent VC and the corporate VC. So now, Jennifer, tell us more about you. Uh, you obviously uh, dealing with sustainability topics for many years. Uh, wh where does this passion f for this topic comes from, actually? Yeah. So, uh, I think it comes from my character type, actually. Mm -hmm. So, since I was a child, I always uh, was drawn to efficiency and, and hated waste. And so, the status quo around all topics related to sustainability and climate change sort of baffled me right from, right from childhood. Um, and sort of as I grew up and looked more into this topic as well, the concept of growth and progression also generally featured. So I was very interested initially in the development of emerging markets, mm -hmm. um, but then more latterly, the development of capitalism and its progression in Europe. And so that's what's drawn me into the space. So, so you've been active in venture capital, focused on sustainability topics in your previous fund experience before joining Swisscom. Can you tell us more about the, the London-based uh, experience you had in that uh, actually very big uh, sustainable fund? Yeah, absolutely. So I started my career in strategy consulting, actually. Uh, firstly, looking at growth options for more mature businesses. And... Um, it became a little bit too intangible for me. I didn't feel the pulse or the growth of that phase. And so I got drawn towards VC. Um, I think putting cash uh, into, into companies and feeling the risk means that you feel these ups and downs much more acutely um, than you would otherwise. And that's where I want to be as a kind of partner to my companies. So this drew me towards VC and... Um, and in particular, towards Impact VC. Um, so I started investing uh, a very innovative fund in 2014 on behalf of LGT Capital Partners. Um, a fund, a first fund was 50 million, but the institution has now raised over a billion uh, behind this strategy of uh, sustainable technologies. Hmm. And then you came to Switzerland, so wh why did you join uh, Swiss conventions, actually. Yeah, great question, and a lot of people ask me this, and um, so I think we need to do a better we need to do a better job of marketing our, our fund. Um, but actually, I think I have the most exciting seat in sustainability VC here in Switzerland by a long way. Uh, the reasons for this are that Swisscom as a, as a corporate is uh, very focused on sustainability, has been on its sustainability journey for over 20 years now, and most recently set very ambitious targets for 2025. Why is that important? Because it, it catalyzes action. Um, so the two, the two targets are to be net zero by 2025, and uh, to reduce CO2 amongst the customer base by a million tons by 2025. So the, the first reason is that Swisscom, the corporate, is very energized in this space. The second reason is that uh, it works with almost all businesses in Switzerland in some way. So if our collective challenge for the next 10 years is to decarbonize business in Switzerland, in Europe, uh, then, Sw then Swisscom is uniquely placed to do this in Switzerland. 
so I found that particularly exciting. And then lastly, uh, to, join, to join the Swiss Conventures team. Uh, our brilliant VC team deployed over 100 million last year in the individuals, companies, and markets, which are currently changing the global economy. So, it may explain we have two funds, one out of the major main fund, uh, and also another specific uh, initiative, let's call it a smaller fund, on, only on, on sustainability topics. Uh, you may want to explain why, does corporate, why do corporates need this vehicle to invest in sustainable uh, companies? Uh, what's the intent behind, the strategic intent? Yeah. Swisscom has a, faces a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. you know, it needs to uh, continue to reduce its carbon footprint, something which, after 20 years of activity and reduction, becomes increasingly challenging. Mm. And now we're looking at the really difficult challenges, for example, of decarbonizing our supplier base and even helping our customers decarbonize. And you can't do those things alone. And so you're looking for innovation, scalable innovation, typically coming from, from within the, the VC entrepreneurial ecosystem. And you want to, to sponsor that and bring it forward uh, into the corporate. And that's what this vehicle is targeted at achieving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's also about making money, isn't it? So <laughs> I, I don't know, you know many of us uh, who've experienced the first uh, clean tech uh, boom and boost um, yeah, basically, uh, uh, but boom and bust phase. We are scared by uh, hardware investments. Uh, clean tech doesn't always have a good um, reputation in the venture capital space. And now there is a new wave of hype around this topic. So is it different now from before? And on purpose, I'm a bit negative here. I, I, I have my own beliefs, but what's your take on that? Yeah, a lot of people got heavily burnt in the last clean tech wave, and it's burnt into our memories as venture capital investors, I think. I wasn't investing at that time, but I think this time is different uh, for three reasons. One, the regulation and regulatory environment today is much broader in reach than it was before. Mm -hmm. So previously, it was focused on subsidies and in specific industries. And now we have uh, regulation and policy which targets all big businesses and all large financial institutions. So the breadth of regulatory pressure. Uh, secondly, it's the strategic nature of corporate engagement. I think there's been a uh, wide recognition that climate risk is financial risk. And as a result, the buying pressure from corporate is much more strategic in nature than it was before. Mm -hmm. And finally, I think collectively, you know, this conference is a great example. We've all realized the climate change challenge you know, more accurately, uh, more intensely, and in a more near-term way than, than was previously the case. And I think these things, these three points together um, create very rich tailwinds where you have you know, policy, business, and consumers all pulling in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's what's different this time. Mm. Great. Uh, looking at the time, yes. you may want to uh, so conclude. If we have one minute left, I don't know. We thought no, we had we have 10 minutes. I think we have 10. Um, so over to you, Dominic. Um, so Dominic published a book earlier this year, and um, I think it was roughly three years of effort. Um, so, so, Dominic, why did you set down to, to write this book? Well, first, it, it's, uh, you know, I wanted to honor entrepreneurs, uh, especially from this country, Switzerland. That's why I called it Deep Tech Nation, because we, we come from a high um, technology culture for the last 200 years. Uh, probably the only country in the world where people are happy to have complications. I mean, that's basically in the watch industry. So uh, this uh, cultural background is very important to look uh, positively towards the future. Uh, high technology is about high precision, uh, efficiency, uh, and that's why I think Switzerland has a particular place to roll in, uh, a role to play, to play in these sustainability topics. It's about making processes uh, more efficient 
and uh, that this way you save a lot of resources. So I see, for example, in uh, high precision agriculture with eco robotics, which is currently presenting on another panel, uh, you can save 90% of the pesticides. Uh, you can also potentially save 90% of the fertilizers. Imagine the, the impact in the world. It's, it's about, it could be all, up to one billion tons of CO2 uh, saved if you were to, uh, um, to do this at scale. So I wanted to write a book to honor this country, the entrepreneurs, and beyond that also uh, call for action for more investment in venture capital. Mm -hmm. Because venture capital is a fantastic tool, an instrument to solve some of the world's largest problems. And uh, so we have a huge privilege to have half a trillion now, 500 billion of French capital money in the world uh, to be spent at our discretion. So it's a huge responsibility for our investors because we can spend it wherever we want. And in the past, you know, we've put 80 billion, for example, in the Uber type taxi app competition, is it worth really the money? I'd rather have uh, at least 79 billion of that uh, spent on, on solving real problems. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's our responsibility to understand which are the problems we want to solve and how to solve it with technology. And I think technology is a, an immense power to solve some of the, not just technological issues, but also some of the societal and environmental issues of the world. Mm -hmm. And what's the key message that you want this audience to take away from the book? Let's be more ambitious. First, especially Europe, we invest six times less money than venture capital uh, than the US. That has uh, driven huge uh, competitive disadvantage compared to Anglo-Saxon uh, companies because they are, they are six times better funded than we are. Uh, same issue in Switzerland. So, the ambition level may be raised to the next level. If we want to compete in the first league, we have to have the financial means for this. So the book is also uh, um, you know, an indication for uh, starting with the politics, uh, but also the institutional investors to understand why venture capital is a very specific asset class. It's only 2% of the total asset class uh, of investment, but it has much more impact than all the others because, for example, eight out of the top 10 companies in the world are venture capital backed. So the disruption comes from venture capital, 100% mm -hmm. clear. So that's exactly the point where you want to put more money at work, not just in R&D, uh, because there is already enough money, uh, not in capital markets once you're IPO and you have enough money, but in between. And that's where we have uh, we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. And with you know, this audience here today, we've got policy makers, we have entrepreneurs, we have VCs here in, 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 the, in the room. So what are your proposals to the, the ecosystem? What would you want to see happen? What are, the, what are the outcomes you want from the book? The general framework should be uh, very simple about encouraging institutional investors putting money in venture capital asset class. That's the first topic, it's about volume. As I said, uh, Klaus Hommel yesterday mentioned 100 billion for, for Germany. I'm talking about 10 billion Swiss francs or about 9 billion euros for, for Switzerland. It's the same, uh, actually the same topic, mm -hmm. a one to 10 relationship given the size of the country. So more money is fundamental if you want to have more impact. Mm -hmm. And the, the rest can be a matter of community decision. We collectively, and investors and entrepreneurs, we can decide where to put this money. And that's the great privilege we have. So it's not a neutral investment decision. Uh, venture capital is the highest impact asset class because you invest uh, at the moment of growth and you decide what, what's the ambition level, what's the size, the level of impact you want to have, and which direction you want to put, pivot into. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is, uh, you know, that's why I'm in this business. It's because the, of this uh, very specific period in a time of a company where you have an impact. Now, if you invest one million in, in Tesla shares today, you have much less impact than investing $10,000 uh, 15 years ago when, when Tesla was uh, almost bankrupt. So you really want to put your money where the, it has the highest impact. Yeah. And I know that you have some, um, you believe that corporate venture capital uh, has a special place in the ecosystem. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? 
Yes, corporates are still the dominant forces uh, in the economy because they have the infrastructure, they have employees, they have the money and uh, political influence, uh, but they will not do the disruptive innovation. So you need to have a cooperation between the external innovation space, ecosystem, and the corporates. And this has to be fluid interface to have the maximum leverage. So really believe in this dual game. It's not one against the other. It's really a partnership. And the corporates have the tendency to uh, under, underestimate the, what's going on out there. Uh, so you want to have constant reminder that uh, through open innovation, you, you, you get into uh, uh, an innovative partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have one foot in both worlds as a corporate VC, and we try to bridge between them two. Super. Great. I think that's the end of our session. Thanks very much, everyone. Thanks a lot.